John Mulaney told a story about the Secret Service investigating John Mulaney. Now, time out. John Mulaney was on Jimmy Kimmel when he told this story. And the reason he was on Jimmy Kimmel was John Mulaney is promoting season four of Big Mouth. So I'm not saying this story isn't true. I'm just saying it's a convenient time to be telling the story, quite possibly exaggerated for comedic effect. So Mulaney was on with Kimmel, and he talked about a Trump joke he told on Saturday Night Live, not during his recent appearance, although Mulaney said anti-Trump viewers were annoyed with a setup implying that it didn't matter which elderly man people voted for on Election Day. So the punchline there was the poor will still suffer, the rich will continue to prosper, the mentally ill and the drug addicted will still not be taken care of. Mulaney said, I forgot to make the joke good. I like people and I'm generally happy and not deeply angry. And he added, my dad didn't make me feel like not a man. So I'm like, you know, not trying to prove him right by voting for some psychopath. But none of that has anything to do with the Secret Service. As Mulaney explained to Kimmel, he became under the official scrutiny of, quote, a service that operates for the president and their secret. He said they checked him out because one of his pesky asides, I don't want to get visited by any secret agencies. So you can look up the joke yourself. Just Google John Mulaney. It'll come up. Uh, but it had something to do with Julius Caesar. Think about it. And that agency opened a file on Mulaney. Mulaney said the agent who checked up on him for a joke wasn't all that urgent determining Mulaney's threat level. But he said since his wife was then working for the Smithsonian, and the Smithsonian is across the street from a certain building in Washington, D.C., he can only imagine that his file had a yellow flag on it for such a time. This story is getting a lot of pickup, but I'll remind you, John Mulaney is promoting Big Mouth Season 4. There you go, John Mulaney. You got your press. Over on Colbert the other night, President Obama was the guest of the presidency. He said, I found the work fascinating. Even on my worst days, I found puzzling out these big, complicated, difficult issues, especially if you're working with some great people, to be really satisfying. Colbert said, we found out from your successor there's a whole bunch of stuff you don't actually have to do. And Obama joked, who knew? <laughs> The late night hosts were talking about uh, Attorney General Bill Barr dismissing the idea that there was widespread voter fraud. Kimmel said, oh, man, if Bill Barr had a neck, Trump would totally be ringing it right now. Corden said, it's so weird they didn't find evidence of the very thing they never backed up with any evidence. Kimmel, William Barr has been one of Trump's most obnoxiously loyal allies throughout. Emphasis on lies and allies. That would be like if Thelma turned on Louise Fallon. When Trump heard about William Barr, he was so mad he ordered William Barr to prosecute William Barr. That is a good one, Fallon. At this point, Trump's lost Fox News, Republican senators, and now Bill Barr. Next, it's like if Randy Quaid jumps ship, it's over. YouTube has released a list of the top 10 trending videos of 2020. I'll just tell you the comedy ones. Ricky Gervais, Golden Globes monologue, number eight. Saturday Night Live's presidential debate, cold open starring Jim Carrey as Joe Biden was number three. But number one on the list, Dave Chappelle's 846. Congratulations, Dave Chappelle. I saw this one. This is a complete ridiculous no reason for me to tell you this story other than it made me laugh from lohud.com your home for comedy news comedian hassan minhaj is apparently a minivan kind of guy he posted an instagram photo of himself and his new black honda odyssey which he got at white plains honda just before thanksgiving the actor noted the car's leather interior and thanked the dealership for making a brown dad dream come true Lohud adds it's not his first sighting in Westchester. Three years ago, he was in the passenger seat for an episode of Seinfeld's Comedian Cars Getting Coffee. That's the entire news story. Lohud printed Hassan Minhaj bought a Honda Odyssey. All right. <laughs> From LA Magazine, Jamie Masada, he owns the Laugh Factory. They asked him, hey, can you remember when you saw a comic for the first time and said that person has potential? His answer, Dave Chappelle. Dave came into the club at 17 or 18 years old. He came from Washington. He went on stage and I went, oh, my God, this guy's brilliant. The way he walked around the stage, I'll never forget it. Talking to the audience, going back and forth with him. I knew a star was born. I told a couple of people, this guy's going to make it all the way to the top. But a lot of people saw that in him. You can't give me all the credit. He just blew me away. So original, so creative. Everything about him was so real. He's a wonderful person. He gives back so much. That is high praise from Jamie Masada, who has seen a lot of people pass through the Laugh Factory. Very impressive. Vanya Land said to Jeff Dunham, hey, Jeff Dunham, with this being your 10th special, does it have a milestone feeling of reaching that kind of number after all these years on the grind? Jeff said, 
you know, I guess we would have celebrated that more and things been normal, but I guess this is so last minute. Maybe we should have embraced it more, but I think there's too many other things to focus on right now. I actually hadn't counted and I forgot that my last special was number nine. So when someone brought up the fact that this was number 10, it was just amazing to me. I hadn't even realized we'd gotten to that point. So to answer your question, yeah, it's pretty significant to me. I wish we could have celebrated more, but who knows? Maybe in another universe, the number 11 is more important than the number 10. So we'll celebrate number 11. They asked him, you know, the 2020 question, pandemic, social stuff, whatever. And he said, I used to say that stand-up comedy was the last form of free speech, but that's gone out the window. And as you know, and as everyone knows, you can't tell a joke that offends too many people. I also used to say if a comic is offending three to five percent of the audience and making them mad, he's probably pushing the line just about right. Because whatever that five percent is angry about, the other 95 percent is laughing the hardest at. The trouble with that is the sanctity of live performance in a theater or comedy club is now gone. Because now that five percent can end your career with a simple tweet or two. And I think that's one of the constraints right now and trying to have to create comedy without picking on people or making fun of stuff. That's what comics do. We make fun of society and how we're living and what someone else is doing. It's a lot more difficult right now to write stuff that won't cause a firestorm but still remain interesting with an edge. Vanya Land said, I feel like people miss the point of a character like Walter sometimes. Jeff said, yeah, that's why I like what I do because I can point and counterpoint very easily. It's one of the characters and I'm creating characters. They're not what I think. I've created characters that say things because they are who they are. So if one of the characters says something that isn't quite right, I could argue the opposite side of things. You can walk away from my show not really knowing how I think because I argued both sides and make jokes to both sides of it. And I think that's one of the reasons people coming back to the shows with that suspension of disbelief and people walk away thinking those guys were funny and not he's a good ventriloquist. That's not the point. The point is you heard a fun conversation between characters on stage. Not just one guy. And that is your comedy news for today. Follow the show on Spotify. Subscribe on Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your shows. I'm Johnny Mac at DCNPod on Twitter. See you later.